Alright, alright, alright. We are back here at Song of the Day coming to you from the Rock Cave. I'm your host, Mark Pierce. It is Friday. You know what that means. Say it with me. It is Octane Friday. And that's when we kick it up a notch. And not only that, but it is Favorite Albums Week here in the cave. You guys are wondering, I know you're wondering, you're wondering, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Is it going to be Queensryche Operation Mindcrime? What, is it going to be White Snake Slide It In? Is it going to be Typo Negative Bloody Kisses? Is it going to be any Van Halen record except for Van Halen 2? No, Women and Hill Children first. Sorry. Uh, is it going to be Udo Dirk Schneider? What's it going to be for metal? It's actually pretty clear. To me, if you guys... Well, there's a Easter egg here on the screen. But um, clearly, what we've been doing all week is not just favorite albums, but more like Desert Island albums or most influential albums growing up. Uh, that kind of stuff. Could be the heavy metal soundtrack. Uh, but it's not. It's not. It's basically this. This we've covered before, but Black Sabbath, Paranoid. I mean, this thing is amazing. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff in here. I mean, I've got a box set. Got this anniversary box set that has hardcover books, CDs, posters. Oh, you heard that. You get it, you get it, you get it. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff. Look at this, look at this hardcover book right here. That came with it. Um, live stuff. There's all kinds of stuff in this box set. Uh, but this is a super important record in my life. I don't know if it is in yours. Um, and Paul Chabot, we've covered Black Sabbath before. Did we do 17 minutes on the first one or on Paranoid or both? I don't remember, but I'm not going to do that to you today because we'll just post the Black Sabbath episode below. But let's do what's best we can. It's probably going to take some time, but let's try. Uh, remember, Black Sabbath's debut album comes out on Friday the 13th. 1970 in the UK and is not released in America until June 1st of 1970. Three months later, Paranoid comes out. Paranoid comes out in September of 1970. Obviously, it's about seven months after the UK debut, but that's an insane. That's crazy that they released another record so fast, right? I mean, a lot of this music came from those sessions or at least from their live performances. They were working through the music, uh, and so a lot of it does originate from there. But that's crazy. That's just crazy to think, right? Uh, again, their second studio album, and it's uh, the number one Rolling Stone magazine at one point named this the number one greatest metal album of all time, and it's the only UK number one for them until 20 and 2013 when the album 13 went to number one. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just, this is just crazy, right? So, but what about this record? I mean, the first record we talked about is like a blues record. I mean, it's heavy, but there's so much blues in that first record. Is there any blues here? I mean, there's a little bit of influence there, but a lot of this stuff is a little bit more heavy. But is it metal? Question is, is it metal? I mean, it is, but like, and this is, we, when we heard this for the first time, we were like, we are Satan worshipers, right? This is the heaviest stuff we've ever heard. But now, the stuff we listen to, we're, this is like a walk in the park, isn't it, when you listen to Paranoid? I don't know. You, you guys tell me. Uh, but the original name of this record was Walpurgis which is the satanic version of Christmas. And there was like, record companies like, no, you're not doing that. So then they were like, okay, we're going to call it War Pigs. And basically the record company changed it, maybe without even telling them because it's the height of Vietnam. They're like, no, you're not calling your album War Pigs. The album cover was shot when the album was called War Pigs. So that's this. That's this cover right here, which always, even when I was a kid, I was like, what's going on here? That's like low budget. Uh, and even Ozzy himself says, what the F does a bloke dressed as a pig with a sword have to do with being paranoid? He's got a fair point there. I mean, he's, that's, a, that's a fair point. Uh, but anyway, uh, this particular record, when did I hear it? Well, I do have to credit my brother, Michael, because uh, he did influence my music tastes uh, early on and he was playing this record and uh, we did the uh, Columbia record and tape thing where you got the 10 or 12 cassettes for a dollar or whatever 
And this is one of the ones, and of all the songs on this record, the one I was obsessed with first was Electric Funeral. How about that? And I, I just love that beginning of Electric Funeral. And I love the vocals, like that's the one that I was obsessed with, right? Uh, so, and I don't know that very many people know Electric Funeral, because anyway, but that's the one that I was playing all the time. And of course, so let's talk about these songs. War Pigs, I mean, come on, I mean, right? I mean, the first side A is just like part of their greatest hits, right? War Pigs, which by the way, the band Cake does a decent uh, remake of, I do have to say so myself, but War Pigs, super important record. Uh, Paranoid, of course. I mean, all this stuff is just, we've talked about it. Uh, it's just iconic Black Sabbath. Uh, Planet Caravan, what's not to like about this? I mean, there's some kind of, I don't know what's going on there, but musically, a little bit different, right? And then Iron Man, it was, I think it was called Iron Bloke when they first wrote it, and Ozzy's like, that sounds like a big guy running around town, a big bloke running around town or something, so they changed it to Iron Man. That's side A, people. It's side B for me. That's where it's all at. I mean, I love those first songs, but this side B is like, that's where I just like obsessed and listened to over and over again. That electric funeral on side B. Hand of Doom. Oh my God, it's getting so good. Hand of Doom, Rat Salad, Fairies Wear Boots. That one is awesome. The original US copy had different names for stuff. I remember this, I remember my cassette. The original U.S. had War Pigs slash Luke's Wall. So the outro of War Pigs was called Luke's Wall. And for Fairies Wear Boots, the intro was called Jack the Stripper. So it said Jack the Stripper slash Fairies Wear Boots. I don't know what that's all about, but that's just fact for you guys. And again, I don't need to get into all this stuff musically because we're going to post it. We're at seven and a half minutes. But I'm just saying, this record is the earliest record for me that was heavy, different, important, the whole album, amazing. I can't say enough about that. Side B, fairy wears bo fairies wear boots, hand of doom, rat salad, all that stuff. I've listened to over and over again. I still do to this day. It's a Desert Island record. Uh, I can't say enough about it. Now the question is, how does this hold up? I mean, we're talking about 1970. This is music, when you listen to this, say to yourself, this is 1970. And it holds up. The music holds up. Yes, it's heavy, but it's it's I don't know I don't even know what you guys are gonna have to fill in the blanks here but super important record for me and uh, I just love this record it's perfect for Octane Friday and we're at eight minutes already so I'm gonna give you guys a break uh, but we're doing Black Sabbath Paranoid today I want you guys to play it how like who out there does not know this record raise your hands it's okay you're, you're in the trust tree raise your hand if you haven't heard side B of Paranoid. You're going to listen to it today, and I want to know what you think. I just, someone, take my dare. Double dog dare. But anyway, Black Sabbath today. Octane Friday. Enjoy it. I hope whatever you're doing today involves music as we roll into this weekend. What do you guys think about the mutton chops for spring? You good? You good with the mutton chops? Anyway, uh, have a good one, and as usual... I'll catch you on the flip side.